I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a fabric bunting banner. While I chose patriotic colors, you could choose any fabric or color combination for any holiday or special event that you would like. So let's get to it and I'll show you exactly how to make it. It's a great beginner sewing project. So first take a plate. My plate was nine and a half inches wide and trace the outside of that plate on the fabric that you are going to use. You're going to want one full circle for each part of the bunting, each semicircle that is on that bunting banner. Now I used interfacing and I did the same um, pattern around the plate on the interfacing. One hack is that I folded the interfacing in half and then in half again. So I only had to trace it once, but I could cut out four circles of interfacing. Now I use a very lightweight featherweight interfacing. You could use something that's a little bit thicker. And this was the iron-on interfacing that I used. The little polka dots is where you put it on the fabric and iron. And just keep that in mind so you don't accidentally get interfacing on your iron. Now I cut out all the circles that I wanted for the bunting. So I am trimming the interfacing about a quarter of an inch. And this is simply so the interfacing isn't in the seam allowances when I turn the circles inside out. Now I am pressing on that interfacing. Be sure not to move the iron back and forth when you are using fusible interfacing. Just press it on each uh, piece of the interfacing for about 10 seconds, lift it up, and then press again. As you can see, I've got that quarter inch seam allowance around that doesn't have any interfacing on it. Now if you're new to interfacing, you might be wondering how do you know if it's stuck? So when it hasn't been adhered, you see those little polka dots like right there on the left hand side of the circle. Once it has been adhered with the hot iron, you won't see those circles anymore. Okay, so I've got the interfacing on all of the circles and now it is time to make the half circles. So I'm gonna fold each circle in half and then I'm gonna crease it. You should be able to see that crease and then cut along that line. What I do want to point out and what it is not shown when I just did that fold is that if there is a pattern that needs to be upright, you do need to make sure that that circle is cut appropriately. Then join the two half circles together. I used about a quarter inch seam allowance and then turn them inside out to be making these like half circle pockets. What I did was cut very close to the seam so that it would turn inside out more easily. Then I did a top stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge, but it doesn't really matter how close it is to the edge. Now I'm gonna use the bias tape that I got at a thrift store. If you'll notice the price, it is super cheap. So this is a three yard bias tape. I got extra wide. And this is what we are gonna put the fabric half circles on in order to hang it. So bias tape is always gonna have tons of folds in it. So you definitely wanna open up the whole thing and iron it flat. Then you're gonna put the half circles in between that fold. So you just want to be sure that you position them in a way that makes sense for where you're going to be hanging them. I used about two inches in between each of the half circles on mine, and then I pinned them inside the bias tape. You definitely want to do this so that it's ready to do a full stitch like the whole way through once you get ready to sew everything together. Start at one end of the bias tape and you're actually just gonna be sewing that bias tape together uh, to start with. And then you're gonna be coming across those little half circles on the top. I stitch really close to the edge of the bias tape for a nice look. And that is really all that there is to it. If you need any more help with how to make a fabric bunting, be sure to see my blog post link in the description below.